time, let me turn it over to Harold. Do you want me to share your share this the screen, Harold? Or uh, actually, yeah, I have so. a I have a uh, PowerPoint. Okay, the floor is yours. Do I have to click on my share screen too? Um, I don't know. Try it without. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, I've never been on your end. I've only been controlled it from my end. All right, let's try it. Oops. Are you still there? Yep. Okay. <laughs> While he's following, can I share a piece of information? Oh, go right ahead, Ray. Well, it is my distinct pleasure to announce that Larry Crankson is now part of the section uh, team. He is now the affiliated club coordinator. Oh. Good for you. Congrats, Larry. Congrats. Yeah, congrats. Do you see my screen or not? Uh, just you, not your screen. Oh, boy. I clicked, uh, yeah, multiple options to share. So you should have to just bring it up on your screen and maybe just click share and. Uh, all you have to do is click share screen and it should pop up. Yeah. Screen well, I lost my whole Zoom screen too. Hang on. Oh, okay, I got the Zoom screen. I'm going to click on share screen. Anything? Nope. Oh, boy. It worked when you ran your, um, your, pre your yeah. um, awards presentation meeting. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, let me double click on this. Select a window or an application that you want to share. Hey. There you go. We're getting closer. Now that there we go. And hit right, F5 to it. go full screen. And there we go. Whoops. Oh boy. Oh well. Like I don't know if I can go back. I, oh. I think left or right arrows will take you back, I believe. Hey, there we go. All right. So this is uh a little presentation on summits on the air. This is their logo. Uh, and what is SOTA? SOTA stands for Summits on the Air. It's an amateur radio awards uh, scheme. Let me get rid of this other little, there we go. Um, it is in fact mountaintop in communications. There's no dues, no membership requirements. There are awards for both activators and chasers. And if you remember one thing, remember soda.org.uk. It has everything you need. Um, it was originated in the, in the United Kingdom in 2002 and ended up over here in the United States in 2010 with Steve WG0AT. You see the goat there? And uh, by sending CQ from Mount Hermon. So that's how it came to the United States. This is the... Uh, main website. Um, I'm gonna mostly talk about the bottom, which is the, where's my cursor, hello. Oh, there it is. Whoop. Quick links, joining in, Soda Watch database, uh, all this stuff, I'll, I'll be talking about each, each one individually. Um, as I mentioned, this is, a, this is the only, the main site for Soda. To post an alert or a spot or an upload, or if you wanna browse through summits, you'll need to register an account. There's no charge for this, there's no membership, but you need to register an account because it's gonna be under your name. You'll wanna post an alert before you activate your next summit. You can do that a day before, two days before, a week before, but it's on the list. And then when you arrive at your summit, You'll want to spot yourself to say, okay, I'm set up, I'm here, I'm ready to go, start calling. <clears throat> when you're done, you'll want to upload your contact. Soda, <clears throat> excuse me, Soda is global, so it runs 24 hours a day. You might not get the summit in, uh, in the Alps of Italy, but he's out there. I have, an, I have an iPhone, and I installed a program called Soda uh, Goat. And that's so I can spot myself. Now, for those places that don't have cell service, I recently saw the uh, great presentation that Aaron had given us from the uh, Franklin group on JT8 call. 
And you can actually post your, your spot via JTA call to the SOTA website. How? I don't know. <laughs> the uh, presentation. And JTA, uh, JTA call. It was a phenomenal uh, presentation. WinLink, I think, will do the same thing. I'm not 100% sure. And uh, pretty soon, uh, Bob K1YO is doing a, some sort of a uh, presentation on all these uh, digital applications that will uh, help during emergencies. And JTA call and WinLink is one of them. So, <clears throat> boy, my horse. <laughs> So on Soda Watch, you want to set up an alert. You want to say, okay, on Thursday the 24th of February, I'm going to be in such and such a place. Now, if we look here at 10 o'clock, this gentleman in France will be on, this is the designation FL slash V0-041. And I'll show you where you can get that. That's the designation for the summit that he will be on. And he's expected to be there about 10 o'clock in the morning. He'll tentatively be on 7035 CW, 10118 CW, and uh, 20 meters CW. We'll get into all the different frequencies and modes uh, in just a minute. So this sets up the alert that says, hey, I'm gonna be here on this particular day. When he gets there, and he isn't on this particular list, but for example, at 1554 WG4I is on this SOTA site, this summit, and if you just hover over it, it'll give you some details that he's gonna be, he is currently on 21.325 single sideband and the time, he, there's a timestamp there. The name of the mountain, which is this designation is Joe Mountain and it's 924 meters high and it's worth six points. I'll get back to the details on that a little later. Under the database, it, under menu under the database um, under that for that website home is your personal profile uh, no home <laughs> home is the home site the user account is your account uh, there's not too much to it it's just the username password you can view your results from different uh, summits that you've either activated or chased there's also a section on summits there's a list of summits uh, how do you find a summit if you know it by name or by designation? There's also a list of popular summits and recently activated summits. And this is very helpful um, when you go to choose which mountain you want to climb. When you go to the summits listings, there's a couple of layers that you need to go through. We are in W1 Association, which on the right you can see is New England. In the New England area, there's the Connecticut Berkshires, the Hanging Hills, the Metacomet Range, the Appalachian Mountains, and the Connecticut River area. And there's 12 summits just in the Connecticut Berkshires. The Appalachian Trail, because it goes from Georgia all the way up into Maine, has 426. Most of them, not all of them, most of them will be in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. It's a lot more mountainous up there than it is down here. And if we drill down another layer, I'm still in the W1 association. And by the way, you know, you can go worldwide. You can go anywhere in the world on this website. So uh, for us to keep it simple, I left it at W1, which is our area. And I chose the Connecticut River as my region. And these are all the, these are the, I think 16 or 12, whatever it mentioned on the previous page. Oh, right there, 16. These are the mountains. Um, to the right, it tells you how many people have activated it. This will be my points if I, I've done some of these, but this is on a yearly basis. And how many points it's worth. We'll get into the points a little later. Um, I wanted to point out Mount Norwatok is right up north on the Belchertown Granby line. It's the old notch area. That's a, if you're going north on Route 116, Mount Norwatok is on your right. Bear Mountain is the one on the left. That's where the old Westover SAC uh, Strategic Air Command bunker was. If you're not familiar with that, you might want to Google it. It's pretty cool. It's owned now by Springfield College as an archival 
uh, facility. The last section is the soda shop where you can get certificates. You can get a baseball cap. You used to be able to get flat little flags there and what have you, all this paraphernalia. In chaser mode, it's just like, it's very similar to POTA. You sit at home and you search for activators. So what you wanna do is you wanna check soda watch spots to see who's on right now or coming on soon. Because you are going to upload your QSOs, you're gonna to need to register yourself under join in. And that's how you upload, upload your logs. And it's manual, it doesn't import an ADI file. So don't make a hundred and then up, try to upload all oh, hundred. It's uh, quite time consuming. So you'll wanna set your transceiver to the frequency mode and you wanna listen. The, the individual will, be, will most likely be calling CQ soda, CQ soda, CQ soda, this is, and he'll many times give the designation of the mount. And then you can go ahead and throw out your call and hope you get the QSO. Uh, then the exchange is normally signal report and state, 59 Mike Alpha, 55 Mike Alpha, wherever you are in the United States or around the world. You'll wanna log your contacts. So you click on database, click on the menu option, submit logs. And then under the, the next menu option, you wanna submit chaser because you're a chaser. As an activator, first of all, be careful. Know your limitations. This is again, mountain topping. Some places you can drive to, others you have to hike to. Um, I went to Okemo Mountain in Vermont and I took my motorcycle with me and my radios and I rode up the access road. I got about a hundred feet from the summit and it was all rock and stone and mud. So I parked the bike and I had to walk the rest of the way. Some places you can't, can't even bring a vehicle to. Other places brings you right to the summit. When you're hiking, bring only what you need and keep it light. Don't forget, you, if, if you've done your homework and it's a big mountain and there's no access roads and you've got to hike, you've got to bring all that stuff with you. Plan your trip, know the difficulties, map it well, be prepared. Post an alert a couple of days uh, ahead of time. And when you get there, spot yourself. What do I bring? Well, you have to dress accordingly. I've been on mountains where there was still snow up there and yet I was driving my motorcycle. So it had to be in the seventies because I'm a fair, <laughs> fair weather rider. Um, I always bring a first aid kit. You should bring a first aid kit when you're going hiking anyhow. I like to bring a flashlight, you never know. Snacks and uh, fluids is also a good, a good idea. Um, I use a whistle because I, I like to hike and I always bring a whistle because I don't always bring an HT with me to communicate and, and that's for in case of emergencies. It's also a good idea to tell someone where you're going and when, because you never know again. Radios, you can bring just about anything, HF, VHF, UHF. You can operate sideband, C, CW, digital mode, FM, um, microwave, you can bring it, but don't forget, you have to bring it all up, up to the mountain with you. Antennas and fed uh, half waves, dipoles, you can bring a Yagi if you want, if you wanna carry it. Uh, power sources, uh, it's usually batteries. Some people bring you know, solar panels, even small solar panels. And with the technology now, you can get a lot of current out of these solar panels. And, but again, be careful how much you bring because you will be hiking. Some rules, if it's private property, you need permission. And I'll have an example later of uh, an activation that I did that was on private property. Um, if you don't know that it's private, but it's posted, or I shouldn't say that, if you know that it's private, you see the signs, you may wanna look for a, a house or something nearby to find out if you can get permission uh, that day. It's a good idea that if you don't know the mountain to maybe go the day before or a couple of days before to find out if it's public property. Don't litter, take out what you bring in. Uh, you can't be in too close proximity of your vehicle, even though there might be a parking lot at the summit. 
you should go off into a grassy area or away from your vehicle. That's just common sense because people might just plug their rigs into the into the car. I hope not. It's up to the individual. You must be within 25 meters or 80 feet of the peak. Um, how do you determine that? Well, if you're on a mountain and it's labeled a mountain, go as high as you can, I guess. Um, and just, you know, get to as close to the peak as possible without injuring yourself or your equipment. At least one Q cell must be made to qualify as an activation that you can claim. If you want to qualify for points towards awards, you need to make a minimum of four Q cells. And you can only activate that particular summit once a year. So the operation is typically QRP, around five to 10 watts of power. However, SOTA does not specify how much, how much power is required. Um, it's really driven by the need, how much you can put on your back or carry up. Hence, there, there are a few uh, kilowatt amplifiers used in uh, SOTA summits. So the points from the listing, and then you go to code W1, which is our area on the website, you'll see, for example, that Mount Tom is one point. Why is it one point? Well, it's only, it's less than 300 feet, I think. So you get one point for that. While Okemo Mountain, which is close to, I don't want to say 3,000 feet, probably less than that, but that's worth eight points. Killington, for example, which is much higher, is 10 points. 10 points is the max. Now, after making your minimum of four QSOs to get your, your points, you can make 100 QSOs if you want, but you still only get that one point from out top. It's nice to hang around a bit to give chasers the opportunity to claim that summit for themselves as well. So don't just make four QSOs and say, okay, seven threes, I'm, I'll, be, uh, I'll be leaving. When you get home, of course, upload your results. Rules for chasers, you have to have, of course, the appropriate license for the band that the individual is on. Um, you have to, the chaser has to at least give their call sign and two-way report, which I mentioned earlier, 5-9 Massachusetts. Um, you can't use repeaters. You can't use satellites, kites, balloons. It has to be you, your radio, and the antenna. Um, you must submit your logs showing the details of your QSOs because it's gonna, it's gonna ask you what summit was activated on what frequency at one time. At what time? QSL cards aren't needed because the SOTA database is your, is your QSL in a way because they will get verified. An activator may claim the chaser points for QSOs made with activators. On a, it's just like uh, park to park. Well, this is sort of summit to summit. You can get extra points for that. Um, the summit score is claimed from a single QSO with the with the expedition that the person is on. What's, what's that? Multiple QSOs. I lost my cursor again. Get that out of here. Multiple QSOs with the same expedition don't attract uh, additional points. I mean, you make the point, you make the contact, you're done. These are some of the awards that are available: paper awards for 100, 250, five, uh, 500, 1,000, and um, they're for chasers and for activators. Um, you can also get endorsements if you do 100% CW or all VHF. So there's a multitude of uh, certificates and awards that are available. And if you're really bold, and I know there are, there are a few people out there, you can get our certificates for 2,500, 5,000, and 10,000 points. Um, some of them are called uh, the Mountain Explorer, Mountain Hunter, Summit to Summit, uh, specifically a microwave award, and they're all available under the Soda Shop. This happens to be mine for all single sideband, 100 points as a chaser. I, I've done a lot of activations, but not, a, not 100. <laughs> I'm working on it. 
there's a there's a great uh, Facebook page out there that was uh, created by uh, Jim KK1W and Frandy and one FJ. They started that in 2011. And there's a lot of good information on there from around the world, believe it or not. And uh, there's a lot of nice pictures on there from summits around the world. Um, there's pictures of people's equipment, uh, antennas, what transceivers they use. It's a very informative uh, Facebook page. And you, you have to join in, they have to accept you. Right now it's got 530 members worldwide. These are some of my activations. Um, I'm not gonna put them all in here. Uh, this is Bear Mountain in Massachusetts. Uh, that's opposite Norwatak up there in Belchertown and, uh, and Granby. This one is, was a very exciting one. I'm at about 3000 feet. This is in Jay, New York. I'm the only one that ever activated this mountain. I forgot the name actually of the mountain, but in the background, that's White Snake Mountain. That's the ski resort. And in front of me is a cabin that we stayed in that night with uh, no electricity whatsoever, but it had a wood burning stove and plenty of wood. So we had a good time up there and I activated, I had a, an FD817 at the time, which was five watts max. Um, let's see, Talcott Mountain in Connecticut. I strung a dipole between these two trees. I just, I had some thumbtacks with me. Just strung it up there, ran the feed line down, made some contacts. This is the summit at Okimo. I strung a uh, my my 20 meter dipole over this wooden sign here. I made sure it was all wood, and made it an inverted V, and ran the feed line to this little blanket that I had there with my backpack, and again with my 817. Now that was a lot of fun, and that's where I had to walk 100 feet, which wasn't too bad at all. This one. Some of you or most of you should be familiar with this is at Quabbin Reservoir. This is Quabbin Mountain, and this is where the behind me is where that tower is, that stone tower. What's nice about this location is, besides the elevation, there's a parking lot right behind me, maybe, again, maybe 100 feet. And there was this bench sitting right in front. Um, if you look real close, I have this is my MFJ, I think they call it a big ear. It's on a tripod. I used that, strung the feed line over here, brought an umbrella because it was August, it was hot. Brought my little table with me and I operated from there, had a great time. The last one is Peak Mountain. This is the actual trail. I couldn't find a, an open spot. So I just threw my uh, antenna up into the trees here. This is the feed line. So the antenna is close <laughs> and uh, yeah, had a good time. Just like parks on the air, People are curious. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Who are you listening to? And uh, on the face on the uh, website, there's this trifold you can take, and it explains all about soda. So you can tell the people, "Hey, oh, this is I'm a licensed ham radio operator, and this is what we do." And I've got to get back to my activation. <laughs> ah, there we are. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Go ahead, Jackie. Uh, uh, here are all these activations you've done been CW? No, all single side band. Really? Oh. I, okay. I I'm I'm not good at CW. Okay. I needed I needed it to pass my license and then I forgot about it. <laughs> and that's not nice. <laughs> How do I don't want to get sure rid of it. Pretty typical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Which antenna do you find works the best, Harold? Right. I, li I like my uh, inverted V dipole. John might say that, is John still here? Yeah, there he is. John might say that his uh, NFED works best for him. It's personal preference. Mine happens to be 20 meter. It's a, a tuned dipole. I also bring one for 40 meters just in case. Hmm. No, just curious. Other comments, John, you have comments that you've done so much well, with Harold? I, I haven't got a, uh, a tuned dipole. There, Harold loves the uh, resonant dipoles and, and I admire that. But then you're stuck with one band and I have ABB. So um, <laughs> I, I like stuff where I can drift around and you know get into, so I've got both a, a coil vertical and a, uh, an end fit. Uh, I'm 
contemplating making that NFED that you send us out the information on because that's a different NFED than I have. I have the random wire and that one's a half wave and they behave differently. I have different efficiencies and stuff. So um, anyways, yeah, that also depends. That, that tuned dipole doesn't weigh but about four ounces when you hike it up a mountain. And even my uh, little NFED weighs more than that because it's got the matchbox on it. And and now I bring my 857 because I, I literally blew up my 817 and I'm not going to tell you the story because it's too it's too embarrassing. <laughs> so oh come on you want to hear it? No, you hear don't. amongst friends. <laughs> well, I have an 817 and I don't want to do it too. So tell me what you did wrong. <laughs> well, instead of looking to see that the red wire goes on the plus terminal. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah, I didn't look at it because I reached behind it and was trying to hook it up real quick. Well, poof. But what I meant to say is I use an 857 now, but I can turn it down to five watts because there's you know, RF gain on it. Um, so I can turn down the power. I really like QRP because it really shows your, um, how well your antenna it is performing as well as, I mean, I was on Okemo Mountain and I talked to a guy in Ireland. Now, how cool is that? <laughs> and this was, uh, I think 2019. I mean, that's so the the solar flux index wasn't as high then, so it was it's a blast. It's like Carol. a 3,000 foot tower. <laughs> yes, Larry. Yeah, did you ever uh, go up the Mount Greylock? On a motorcycle, yes. <laughs> I, I haven't <laughs> done the. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> did you do any uh, soda on Mount Greylock? No. Do they let you? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's also a park. Yep, that's uh, a, that's a state a park. Yeah, it's a twofer. Yeah. Matter of fact, Mount Tom is too, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Soda and a powder. Yeah. So I've never done that, and I've never done both, but you certainly could. With your eight fifty seven, how big of a battery do you use? Oh boy, John, what do I have? <laughs> well, right right I've now just, I've got a. Uh, I've got a smaller one than he's got. I've got a 15 amp hour, but I was okay. just making a note to try and figure out how much power it would use on five watts and whether I can order a smaller battery. Yeah, this, on this 15 amp hour battery is four pounds. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot lighter than a lead acid. I used to use that in the beginning. <laughs> on, uh, oh, those on, things uh, are brutal to haul those uh, around. Yeah, I mean, I even I mean, put the, the 857 is four pounds, the battery is four pounds, and you start getting into coax and, and, um, and stuff like that, you can end up, you can hit 20 pounds pretty fast. Yeah. What? So, uh, how much coax? How many feet of coax do you bring? And what do you use for coax? Depends on the I use. <laughs> I use. I, I use 50, our G58, and I bring two, 25 feet and 50 feet. Because I don't know where I'm going to be exactly, or where my intent. Some some of these mountains, there's nothing up there. It's right. flat. You're above tree line. So, so now you got to figure out what you're going to do. Yeah. Jackie, no, go I, ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to keep walking over you. Oh, no, it's all right. John, um, John I'd like uh, to say uh, one thing. Uh, just so uh, uh, for everybody that's watching, uh, just go engage. Hey, uh, <laughs> Y'all are just jealous because you don't have no Star Trek again. <laughs> over to Jackie. <laughs> Uh, Harold, I'm really surprised. I mean, I know you've gone all over the place to do soda summits, and I'm surprised that you haven't gone to Greylock, especially when you can drive most of the way. Why haven't you done Greylock? Because there's a lot of public up there. A lot of oh, people yeah. up there. And I just don't, I don't have yeah. time. I'm, yeah. I'm terrible yeah, okay. at rag chewing and I'm terrible with people. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> uh, I, it's, no, it's, it's the public. I understand it's the that perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. by the by, the yeah. monument up there, there are a lot of people. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I did an activation up there with Frandy and Jim and Marty and Matt many years ago, um, and there were a lot of people up there. There were um, hang gliders launching off the cliff, and uh, I'll bet when we were up there, there were easily fifty or sixty people up there. And they're all curious, of course. Yeah, they all ask too many questions. Yeah. yeah. And they think we're spying on them. My neighborhood thinks I'm spying on them with all my antennas on the roof. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, so do you, thing, when you go to Quabbin, do you uh, okay. stop in? 
All right, let's, 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 let's let Jackie so go, go ahead, first. Uh, Jackie. So when you go, go ahead, to Jackie. Quad, when you go to Quadman, do you stop into the office and tell them you're going to be activating at the tower? No, I wait for them to arrest me. <laughs> yeah, I, I told them I was going to be activating at the tower, and then they had to check with somebody who had to check with somebody who had to check with somebody. And it was like 20 minutes before they figured it out. Then they said, oh, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm good at playing so, stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah see, I, I think been that's three divorces. I found that it's much better to get forgiveness than it is to get permission. There you go. <laughs> well, but, but the public is so paranoid now compared to a few years ago when I when I did that, you know, that yeah. I wonder. Yeah, if it's wiser to tell people you're, what you're doing, so just tell them you're tracking Russian satellites. There you go. <laughs> I'll just, I just wear my don't don't blame me. I voted for Trump shirt. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> that keeps them away. <laughs> All right, Larry, you can uh, you can mute John now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all righty um let's see are there any other questions at all i mean it's um i think oh, we're doing pretty more. good go ahead larry by the way larry you are like ultra blurry here you need to focus yeah, I, know. I, I don't know what it is with this camera sometimes it's good sometimes it is it's kind of warm in here and that may have uh, be affecting it uh, well you, you look, look better cooler, <laughs> i don't know you look uh, better though i was gonna ask you uh how about Mount Holyoke? Is that considered a mountain or uh, listed? That's, that's a poda. It's not a soda. Oh, okay. Really? Not yep. that high enough, huh? I mean, no, I think because Mount Tom is right next door. I don't know. Oh, Mount Tom's across the river from it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know why. I have a question. Go right ahead. Hi, this is Eric Casey, one OAV. Uh, when I go to soda dot org dot uk i get to something called key cloak should i worry <laughs> yes <laughs> hang on let me see i'm going to bring it up so t a soda dot org dot uk i got it i got some of so I, it comes up for me as an administration console. Maybe I've got a problem here. What browser are you using, Eric? I'm using Firefox. Oh, uh, try, try it with Chrome. Yeah, I'll try it with that's, Chrome. What, that's what I use. Okay, Firefox. thank you. Oh, I'll take it offline. Thanks for the presentation, by the way. It's wonderful. Hey, that, you're Ooh. quite welcome. Thank Larry. He, he's the one that pushed me into it. <laughs> Yes. I have one more question. Go ahead, Jackie. Yeah. So, so I'm curious about who decides what the summit, uh, I mean, the originated soda who decides what stuff have never been activated. And, and partly it might be because they're on private property or they're inaccessible. So who decided these were summits if they're not even on property that's accessible each each section like the w1 section has an administrator who submits these mountaintops now he doesn't get all of them and you as an individual if you think that mount Holyoke should be a summit then you submit the information like how high is it where is it what's the accessibility to it so you can submit it to your area administrator and he'll add it to the list if he deems it to be a true summit Got it. So it has nothing to do with the land ownership. No. So if they owned a, a, a mountaintop, somebody might determine that it's a summit and I wouldn't even know it as the owner. Well, yeah, but what they do is uh, in the description, it will say you need to get permission from Farmer Joe. Right. Hi, this is Al. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi, Al. I'm, my camera's not working. I don't know why. I've been doing a bit of this stuff. Um, I've done three of them this month so far. And um, there are a few of them that used to be available and somebody decides they don't want to let people up there. One of them is uh, Crag Mountain up in uh, my, up my way in Montague. Um, but there are some others that are quite accessible but very little used. And I can tell you three of them up on the New Hampshire line in uh, 
Bernardston, uh, Northfield, and Warwick. There are three three mountains up there, almost on the state line. You can you can find a lot of people doing this with HTs up in New Hampshire when you're up one of those out hills. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Thank you very much, Harold. It was very interesting, very informative. Um, yeah. Is your presentation able to be put up on the HJA website? Yes. Okay. I'll, Do uh, I send it to someone? Send it to um, Vanessa, W1IRL. Yeah. And ask her to, uh, to put it up. And of course, this video will be um, up there in a few days too. I'll send you the recording once it's saved to my computer. And um, you know, thank you all for joining us tonight and coming out. Hopefully some of us or some of you will be out there climbing mountains while the rest of us will be down here working you. <laughs> yeah. But Poda is more my style. I, I go up a mountaintop, I might as well bring a stretcher in and uh, a track called for the EMTs. <laughs> I was just going to say one thing, Jackie, uh, that uh, magnetic loop that you have back there in back of you, that's perfect antenna for a summits on the air. Yeah, that's why I go, that's why I bought it, and it's um it's great because it it just breaks right down into a nice little carrying case, and it goes right in my backpack, and I and I also bring a an Enfed with me, um you know, and all the accoutrements. I never brought a first aid kit though. I never really thought of that. I probably ought to do that. Yeah, it you know it can get treacherous up there. You don't know one and, little and slip. Hundred feet of paracord yeah. or something. Yeah. Oh, and you need yeah. much better Especially internet too. Like I am so. Anyways, uh, <laughs> well, once I get you know when I really get there with the house, it'll be better. Okay, sounds good. Any other last minute questions? And uh, nope. Well, everybody, thanks much. Uh, this weekend is the CQ Worldwide WPX. SSB, I believe. Um, contest starts, I think, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time Friday and ends 7 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, you can get um, logs. I use N3FJP, but you can use, certainly use N1MM or others. And uh, it's a lot of fun working all the prefixes um, all around the world. And with the bands in good conditions, it doesn't take much to work around the world. Uh, so maybe we'll hear you on the air. Maybe we'll work you too to get your prefix. But uh, thank you, John. John Larry. Yeah. I think Doug Douglas had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have a question, Doug? We can't hear you. You got to unmute yourself. Can you can you do sign language? <laughs> Try pressing the space bar on your keyboard. Okay, and talk. Holding it down. No. Try Alt A. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Her if 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 you have a question, uh, Harold is n one ftp Go to uh, qrz.com. You can get his email, and I'm sure he'll answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, everybody have a good evening and a, a great rest of the week. And um, um, Keep in mind too, um, uh, September 16th to October 2nd, uh, I'm doing a, a, well, the HRA and all of the clubs in New England, we're doing a booth at the Big E and uh, we're working on some cool stuff for the booth and um, more information will be forthcoming probably in the next 30 days, but we're gonna be looking for volunteers. Um, there'll be state days, um, We've got a good sized booth, a 300 square foot booth, and uh, we're gonna be running a special event station from the booth. So we'll need operators for the special event station as well as manning the booth and talking to the people. And um, I've been told um, uh, probably a minimum of 60,000 people will walk by the booth every day, which is a insane number of people. Um, and on the weekends, it might be double that. So, um, we're going to need help. And um, like I said, probably um, probably no later than the end of April, we'll start doing signups for, uh, for the days. 
um, and for everything. So just sort of keep it in mind. And um, um, I work for Cream Puffs. You work for what? Cream Puffs. Cream oh, puffs. not the eclairs. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, everybody have a good evening and um, thanks for joining us tonight. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Harold. Thanks, Harold. Thanks, Harold. Thanks, Harold. Nicely done. Really nice job. Great job, thanks. Harold. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, hey, Ken. Good job, Harold. Ken. Ken. Yo. Yo. Do you need more egg cartons? Because I have a, a bunch of extra ones. <laughs> I got the, <laughs> the, the big ones. They a uh, dozen and a half or whatever, 18 count. <laughs> yeah. Okay. At, the, at a restaurant? No, what we eat oh. here. Oh, <laughs> we eat a I lot of eggs in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I went to a restaurant and they gave me a whole stack of them. But yeah, hmm. yeah. If I was still in the business, I could have got the big square ones, which is probably yeah. Yep. You gotta find a place yep. that offers the ostrich eggs cartons. You know? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs>